video. Today I'm going to be taking you through a Minecraft underwater aquatic world adventure. So if you um, log on to code.org um, forward slash Minecraft and I'll meet you there. See ya. So um, now we are in uh, code.org forward slash Minecraft. This is an amazing free um, online um, resource that you could use there's lots of tutorials lots of really cool information um so what we're going to do is we're going to go into this minecraft hour of code tutorial um it shouldn't take an hour uh, depending on how fast you want to work through it um but there are lots of other games and things that you could do so today we're going to do the minecraft voyage aquatic um adventure and this is where we explore and we build underwater worlds with uh with liza Cook. so if you just want to click start will pop up on another tab and the first thing that will pop up is this introduction video um, you can watch this if you'd like but I'm going to skip it for this tutorial um, if you would like to watch it then I'd recommend you pause the video and uh, watch it and then play this tutorial again once you're finished so we'll just x out of this um, and the next thing I'll ask you is to choose your character so you can choose between Steve and Alex um, I think I'm going to choose Alex today so it's giving us instructions on the top bar here and it says you need to you need supplies for the voyage ahead collect a boat from the chest so we'll click ok and then this is our workspace here so on the left hand side you've got your program uh, which you can see how your code runs um, in actual minecraft and then over here on the right hand side we've got our workspace so this um, block here you've got all your blocks of code and then on the right hand side, you've got uh, your program where you're going to run your code. So um, the amazing thing about this is that you can see at the top here how many um, blocks of code is needed to be able to run it. Um, it's great because it will encourage you to um, use as little code as possible, basically. So, yeah, we need to collect a boat from the chest. So the chest is here. And what we'll need to do is we'll need to count the number of blocks that um, Alex here will need to move forward. So that's already started it for you. So it says when run, move forward. So if we click run, he's only going to move forward one and we need two. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag and drop another move forward block and then we'll reset and we'll run it again. So this is kind of cool. We've managed to get the boat from our chest and it'll pop up um, with a congratulations notification. So what you can do here is you can actually click show code and it'll tell you that we're working in a computer language called JavaScript. And this is the line of code that we have written, um, not in block form. So you can always copy this or you can make notes if you'd like um, so that you can remember and learn what we've done today. So let's we'll continue and we'll go on to the next challenge. So the next challenge here is that boats are much easier to swimming than swimming in open water. So head to the end of the dock and hop on board our boat. So when we're looking at this, we're imagining as if we're Alex and we're going to move forward one. So we'll drag our move forward block. And then once we move forward, we want to turn right because we want to move towards the boat. And then once we turn right, we want to move forward two times. And then you'll see here that we've used five out of five blocks. So let's run it and see what happens. And we've reached the boat. Again, it'll pop up um, and I'll tell you how many lines of code that we've written in total. And again, you can show your code if you'd like um, and um, you can make notes of it. So let's continue. So the next um, instruction we've got is to grab the oars and pilot your boat across the open seas to catch the cod. So there's our cod there floating in the middle of the of the sea and um, we want to move the boat forward. So here it gives us an indication that we have eight blocks, um, including this when run. So we're going to move forward. We'll just touch these over. So then you want to count how many blocks you're going to be moving forward to catch the codfish. So let's run this program and see what happens. Good. Again, you can show your code, which is um, these move forward lines here. 
So again, we've got another instructional video um, basically telling us that we don't want to be using, um, you know, move forward every single time because we're repeating ourselves. So we kind of want to use repeat until because you don't want to have to write move forward eight times just to get to your goal. So there's an instructional video if you want to click uh, play and watch it. Again, pause this video um, until you finish watching it and then play it again once you're, um, once you're ready to join us. So I'll exit out of this. So we're going to feed the cord to the dolphin and we need to use a repeat until block to get across the ocean faster. So here it's already started it for us, it's given us a little hint and it says when run, repeat until go. And here it gives us three, we need to use three blocks and we've already put two. So we need to repeat moving forward until we get to the dolphin. So let's click on this move forward block and drop it in between this repeat until goal block here so that it just, it goes move forward and it repeats until we reach the dolphin. So let's run and see what happens. Brilliant. So we've managed to complete um, this with just two lines of code, um, which is repeat until goal and then move forward, except um, instead of using the eight lines of move forward code that we did previously. So let's continue and see what other challenges we've been given. So here there's a Nautilus shell hidden somewhere. So we need to explore the shipwreck to reach the chest. So if we look here on the left hand side, we see that the chest is right here and it's already started um, the code for us where it says when run, repeat until go, move forward, move forward. So now we need to work out, um, you know, where we want Alex to go. So now that I'm looking, if I'm looking at Alex, I want to turn, um, I want to turn right. So let's turn right. And let's see what happens. Brilliant. So now we've got to the Nautilus shell. So let's continue and move on to our next adventure. So this one's a little bit more tricky. It's given you two options, repeat until go and repeat three times. So let's see what our instructions are. So it looks freezing up there. Catch a salmon on your way to the underwater ruins. So Alex is down here in the bottom left and our little silly salmon here is in the middle of the screen. But I noticed that there's a turtle here and I think he might block our way to the salmon. So I think the way that I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna go up, across, up and across. Um, I think another way that we can go is across all the way up and across again, but let's go with this and let's see how we can write our line of code. So when run, um, I'm going to repeat until the go. Uh, let's have a look. I'm going to move forward, let's just say um, three times. Let's see how that works. And then I want him to turn right. And then I want him to move forward again three times. And then when I, I get him to move forward, I want him to... Um, Turn left. So let's see how that goes. And we have made it. So let's us actually see if we can change these so we don't have to write move forward um, constantly. So let's move this out. And let's use this repeat three times because we've noticed here that we're actually going to be moving forward three times. So move forward three times and then let's get him to turn right. And then again, repeat three times, move forward, and then we'll get him to turn left. So let's get rid of these blocks by dragging and dropping over here. And then let's reset and run it. Great. So as you can see, there's more than um, more than one way that you can um, get the same goal. It's just a way of thinking smart and using what we have available to get to our end goal. So let's continue. 
So again, we've got another instructional video talking about conditionals. So again, if you'd like to watch this video, press pause on this tutorial and click play on this video and then join us when you're ready again. So our next instructions is that we have found the underwater ruins. So search the sandstone for a chest containing a prismarine treasure. So this is getting exciting now and we can see that we've got these blocks and there's our chest there. So what we're going to do is it's already started it for us. Uh, repeat until go, move forward, and if paths to the right, what do we do when the path is to the right? We turn right. So we'll just add our turn right um, in there and let's run it and see what happens. Brilliant. So we've reached our treasure chest here. Um, and basically what we're saying is that if there is a path to the right, we want Alex to take that path and to turn right. So we just added in that turn right line of code. So let's have a look and see what it looks like in JavaScript. So if you want to take a note of that, please feel free to do so. So we'll continue on to our next challenge. And now what it's saying is first iceberg is now lava. Lava in an underwater world, how strange. <laughs> um, get through this volcanic island and find the tropical fish in the coral reef. So there's our fish there, he's, um, he's swimming away. And there's Alex in the bottom left. So we wanna go up all the way around and round again. So what we're gonna do is when run, we're gonna repeat until go. And we're gonna get him to move forward because we want him to repeat moving forward. But then if the path is to the right, we want him to move right. So let's pop that. So hopefully that should get him to go round in a circle and finally reach the tropical fish. So let's run it. Brilliant. So now that Alex reached our little tropical fish. So let's continue and move on to our next um, challenge. So it's getting a little difficult now, but I think we can manage. It says we've made it to the reef. Now search for the heart of the sea. Use the blue and red coral to search the, to reach the treasure chest. So now we see the treasure chest is here and there's Alex in the bottom screen. So here's when it gets a little bit difficult because we've got these um, blue corals and um, and oak plants and sea lanterns. So what I'm going to do is from looking at this, I think I'm going to try and hit the blue corals. I think those are probably going to be easier and maybe the shorter amount of code. So I'm going to get him to repeat until he gets the goal. Um, I'm going to get him to move forward, but then I want him to turn right when he's standing on this blue coral. So if he's standing on the blue coral, I want him to turn right. So if he goes up and then along, and then he's gonna turn right and then he's gonna keep going, but um, I don't really know what I want him to do. So I think I'm gonna use this red coral here as a reference point. So if he's standing on red coral, I guess I want him to turn left. So let's pop that little thing in. So when he turns left, he's going to hit this blue coral. He's going to turn right, left, right, and right. And then he's going to go all the way to the treasure chest. So let's see if that works. Let's run our code. Brilliant, so now we've got the heart of the sea. So let's show our code in JavaScript to see what it looks like. Um, so what I used is I used reference points um, to see where he could turn. And I imagined myself actually going into the lines of code and turning left and right myself. So let's move on to the next challenge here. We're almost done. So now there's a squid hiding somewhere in the ocean monument. So can I find it? So I can see this little squid guy here so now i'm just wondering how i'm going to get to him so let's have a look here i think these are sea lanterns 
So let's see if I can use these as reference points for him to keep turning on these sea lanterns to reach the squid. So let us repeat until go. And let us move forward. And then when he's standing on the sea lanterns, I want him to turn right. So if standing on a sea lantern, turn right. So I think that's it. I think if we continue with this, we should get to the squid in the middle. So let's run our lines of code. Yay, we reached the squid. Brilliant. So in total, since we started this, we've run 53 lines of code. So let's have a look at that. So let's continue. So we're on to our last challenge now. So we're going to build a wall of prismarine around the black concrete. And this is going to activate the conduit. And we're going to complete our challenge this way. So um, let us have a look at this. So it looks like a basic square. Again, we've got some sea lanterns. So let's see what we could do with our blocks. So you'll see it's getting harder now because it's not giving you an, the, an idea of the number of blocks that we need to, um, to finish this challenge. So let's um, repeat until the conduit is completed. We want him to move forward, but then when he hits the, um, the sea lanterns, we want him to turn right. But before we want him to do that, it says here to build a wall of prismarine. So we've got a line of code here that says place prismarine. So let's place the prismarine. So anytime he moves forward, he's going to place a prismarine. And then once he's standing on the sea lantern, let's change this. We want him to turn right because that will take us into a nice square. So let's run this, run this line of code and let's see what happens. Amazing, we've now activated the conduit. So brilliant, we've got another video here. So again, press pause on this tutorial and press play on this video if you'd like to watch it and then join us again when you're ready. Um, but the, the open aquatic world is yours now. So um, we can have some fun and play about and build, um, build castles, um, place stone bricks down. We could also uh, get some dolphins or sea turtles into our aquatic world. So putting everything that you've learned into the last challenges into this final um, into this final game, you can create your own Minecraft underwater world. So have a go at it and show us your finished um, finished worlds. <laughs>